Somehow, the killing of the giant spider, all alone by himself in the dark, without the help of the wizard or the dwarves or of anyone else, made a great difference to Mr. Baggins. He felt a different person, and much fiercer and bolder, in spite of an empty stomach, as he wiped his sword on the grass and put it back into its sheath. I will give you a name, he said to it, and I shall call you Sting. Hey everyone, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today we will be looking more at the many famous weapons of Arda individually, and this episode will be on the renowned blade of the Bagginses, Sting. Helpful information may be found in the articles and videos in the description and cards, so please check those out. My friends, please relax as we journey back into Middle-earth. Let's begin our tale. Sting, like Orkchrist and its mate Glamdring, was forged by the High Elves of King Torgon of Gondolin. Now Sting would be a dagger to a man or elf, but to its future bearers, it was perfectly sized for a short sword. Like these other aforementioned weapons from Gondolin, its magic was such that it would glow as a blue flame when Orc kind was near, making it nigh impossible for its bearer to be taken unawares, which was likely something the Gondothrim, the elves of Gondolin, were quite concerned about. In the Jackson films, there is elvish writing that is eventually added to the sword sometime after Bilbo finds it, giving it the name Mygnus, which is neo sindarin for Sting. But in the book, no such inscription is said to have been added. Now, for what reason this blade was made, or for who, it is unknown. But I like to think that perhaps this little blade was made in ceremony for the grandson of the King of Gondolin, perhaps for a young Eärendil. But that is purely speculation on my part. Or perhaps Sting was simply meant to be used as a dagger of one of the Noldor. Either way, over the many long years of the world, the sword would eventually find itself in a troll horde in the troll shahs of Eriador during the late Third Age. It seems the trolls may have taken it from some passerby, brigand or otherwise, but it remained buried in this troll horde until the year 2941 of the Third Age, and the May of that year when a company of dwarves, their hobbit burglar, and their wizard Gandalf encountered three trolls by the names of Tom, Bert, and William. These trolls would be turned to stone, and William would drop a key to their troll cave, in which these powerful swords, Orchrist and Glamdring of the Elder Days, would be found, and Bilbo would take a small knife for himself. Now, like Bilbo, this sword had no great name or legacy, not one that we are aware of, at least, but it would make one for itself, just as Bilbo himself did. It was only in the bowels of Goblin Town in the Misty Mountains when Bilbo, who had hidden his knife from the goblins, discovered his blade was elvish too, for he noted its faint light that allowed him some sight down there. To wear a sword of Gondolin in such a place also gave Bilbo courage, as he came face to face with the creature Gollum and found the One Ring itself. Gollum, just as he hated sunlight and moonlight, hated the light of the Eldar and their weapons, so Sting would keep him at bay. Now, though Bilbo would not have to do much fighting himself during his adventure, he would battle spiders to save his dwarven friends in the forest of Mirkwood. Since it was small, just like in Goblin Town, his sword would not be cast aside when Bilbo was taken to be put in a cocoon of spiderweb, and he would use his sword to free himself and slay his spider enemy. He had acted as if he was a fly caught in their web, but with a deadly sting, and thus he named the sword Sting for it was bitter in its bite against the spiders. This sword would allow him to free his dwarven friends as well, and it would remain with Bilbo for the rest of his journey, though again he would not do much fighting, if any at all, from this point on. And so it was that Sting returned with Bilbo to the Shire as an artifact of his adventures, and it sat above the mantelpiece of Bag End, more for ceremony and remembrance than use. In 3001, Bilbo would take this sword with him when adventure once more beckoned to him, and though I still doubt he saw any fighting during his travels at that time, it came to reside with him in Rivendell until 3018 of the Third Age, when the Great Council of Middle-earth would lay upon Frodo, Bilbo's cousin, a great fate, to destroy the One Ring and bring an end to Sauron. And so Bilbo's sword became an heirloom of his house, and another Baggins would carry it once more, and this time Sting would see much more battle. It would aid the Fellowship of the Ring knowing if orcs were near, which to them was a great boon, for theirs was a mission of secrecy. Frodo would draw Sting, but I'm not sure if he would use it during the Fellowship's fight with the wolves in Aregion. And Frodo would wield it in battle in Moria, in the Chamber of Mizarbul, and it would sting the foot of a great troll, to the compliment of Aragorn. Frodo would check Sting on the edge of Lothlorien for danger. Frodo would draw Sting when Gollum got too close to the company, and he would not approach more. Aragorn would also see Sting in Parth Gallon, and to Frodo's dismay it showed some sign of light, telling that orcs were somewhat near. After the breaking of the Fellowship, Gollum would find Frodo and Sam, 
and would be threatened with Sting again, and he hated it and would let Sam out of his grip. The rangers of Athelion would guess that the hobbits were perhaps elves when they saw that sword in Frodo's hand, but that guess quickly subsided. Sting would afterwards go on to face its greatest threat, for coming into the pass of Kirithungal, it would be used in battle against Shelob, of the kin of the Spiders of Mirkwood. Sam Gamgee would bear his master's sword, and for the sake of Frodo, he would deal a great blow against the spider Shelob. Just as it was with Bilbo, Sam was not simply a fly caught in the spider's web. This fly had a sting. After her retreat, Sam would be greatly saddened by his master's fate, and would, if only for a moment, consider joining Frodo in what Sam thought was death with the bright point of sting, like Turin did with Gurthang. But Sam would fortunately decide against such a sorrowful end. Rather, when he learned Frodo was still alive, he would use Sting to free his master from any orcs who still lived and held him in Kirithungal, and the light of Gondolin would pierce the darkness of Mordor, just as the light of Eärendil itself did. Frodo would give Sting to Sam for the rest of their journey to Mount Doom, for Frodo foresaw that it was not his part to deal another blow again. And so it was that Sam carried Sting until after the ring was destroyed and Frodo would relent to Sam and wear it in ceremony in the fields of Cormallon during the celebration of the Ringbearer. Upon returning to Rivendell on their return journey, Bilbo would re-give Frodo Sting and the Mithril Coat, which had a journey of its own, forgetting that he had already given him these things. But it seems that Sting would be left to Sam in the end, when Frodo went into the West, and whether or not Sam would leave it in Middle-earth when he himself sailed west, I know not. Perhaps in the end it would return to elven lands, or perhaps it stayed as an heirloom of the Gamgee or Gardner family, as a relic of the ancient days. Truly Sting became the most legendary sword of the hobbits, matching Andoril for men, or Glamdring for elves and wizards, or Orchrist for the dwarves. Anyway, Sting earned its name and legacy, and we come to the end of our tale. From the story of Sting, we see how small beginnings may become something great with the right care. For just as Sting started as no more than a discarded knife, it became a sword of legend. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this episode of the Artifacts of Arda. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. What are your thoughts, questions, additions, and corrections on Sting? Let me know in the comments below. Sting has always meant a lot to me personally, ever since I was little and young Yoiston had a Sting toy that he would pretend to fight orcs with. Now I'm only older and have a replica sting that I pretend to fight orcs with. <laughs> but all of the stings that I've owned were gifts from my parents, adding more to how much the sword means to me. Thanks to our Valar tier patrons, Adrian de la Tour, Chris Ortner, Peter Shepard, Jonathan Putnam, Mark Kralik, Blair Scout and Tobias Goldner, Merton, John Hume, Ridgey93, Jennifer Wood, Sam McBee, Matt Sabach, Quantum Catalyst, Elizabeth Calvert, Maz Gibbs, Ben Gardner, Condar, and a returning Valar tier patron, Kyle Wetzel. Thank you all so much, it really means a lot to me. Please subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today, and I'll see you all again next week with the Regent Spotlight on Valinor, the Undying Lands. Everyone, thank you all so much for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one, my great friends.